Hello everyone. So there are several components that are inside this uh, project that I would like to talk to you about. Uh, the first one is the game camera, the camera that follows you around the level. And then we have the input manager, which is responsible for your controls on several devices, a so touch screen, a keyboard or joypad. And we also have the audio manager that's responsible for uh, playing all the sound effects in the game. All right, let's get started. So uh, right now I've pressed the play button and automatically the game camera gets created in the scene if it's not there already. So let's click on this camera. So the inspector now shows up some settings of this camera. First of all, we have a follow target. So this is the target that the camera follows throughout the level. Right now it's set on player one. Next up is the distance to the target. So let's tweak this a little bit. And we also have a height offset. This is the downwards viewing angle. And especially with the height offset, you can get some really interesting results with that. Uh, additional offset is not really used. As you can see right now, it's on 0, 0, 0. So there's no, no real offset. And this is used, for example, when you want to add offsets to the camera without the camera having to follow it. So for example, a camera shake, or if you want to focus on a part of the level. Um, next up, when you walk to the front and the background, then you can check this box and the camera will also follow you inside the level. All right, and we have the damp settings. And this is actually meant for smoothing out the camera movement. So when I set these damp settings very low, then the smoothing will be very slow. So like this, if I set these very high, then there's almost no smoothing at all. So it's almost instantly. All right, uh, next up is the view area. So this is actually uh, a position in the level where the area where the camera can go so for example this is the outmost left area that the camera can reach and this is the outmost right area that the camera can reach but i must tell you also that um, when you have these the game is about defeating enemies and when you have defeated all the enemies of a certain area then the game camera continues so what this does is when you when i open the enemy wave system Right now I've disabled all the enemies, but you see these green boxes in the level. And these are actually area colliders for the camera. So when I defeat all the enemies of the first area, this box will go away and the next box will be the camera restrictor. So I'm going back to the game camera. So right now here you can see that the current area collider is this box. I'll check it in the scene. So, all right, let's continue. And the next variable, the area collider view offset is actually when we walk to an area collider like this, then this value decides what part of the level can be seen and what not. So, for example, if I put this on zero, then the area collider is actually almost in the middle, but it would be very strange to just have the character just stop in the middle of the screen. So, so that's the reason why we have this offset, so the camera is positioned on the right side of the screen. The next component that I would like to show you is the input manager. Here's my project, and I'm going to search for input. Here it is, and I'm going to click on it. The input manager is created at the start of the scene when you press the play button. Uh, but every change that you made uh, when out of play mode will also be saved in the project. So for example, right now, uh, these are the settings that I used. So you can see that use keyboard input is active right now. And below here in this section are the keys that are defined for the import for the keyboard. So if you want to change these controls, then be my guest. Just click on it and choose another key. 
Uh, you can also use joypad input, and I've tested it with the Xbox 360 controller, uh, but you can use other joypad as well. So just check it and uncheck the other one, and then the next time when you press play, then you can use joypad input. Here are the joystick keys, so you can change those as well. And the last one is the use touchscreen input. Uh, I've optimized this game for use on mobile and I've tested it on the iPad and the Samsung tablet. Um, when you build to one of those devices, then by default the use touchscreen input is on. But you can also test it within Unity, uh, also in real time. I'll show it to you. So for example, um, uh, let's press play. Here's the game. Um, oh shit, I do have to activate the user interface as well. So. I'm going to level in it. I'm going to check the box create user interface. And right now I'm going to press the play button. So here we are. Right now you can see that the input manager is also created in the screen. I'm going to click on it. And if I now check the use input screen button, uncheck the other one, you can see that the controls for touch screen is also active in Unity right now. All right. So this is also what you will see on an iPad or a tablet. I would like to show you the next component, which is the audio manager. So I usually really hate it when Unity developers have audio sources and audio objects all over the place. So a simple thing like tweaking your values of your sound or just having a simple list of all the sound that's been used in your game, that gets really, really difficult to do. So. Uh, that's the reason why I created this audio manager, which is responsible for playing all the sound in the game. So I'll click on it. Um, this is a list of all the sound effects that are being used right now. So I'll click on the default hit, the first one. The name of this audio file is default hit. It has a, vol a volume of one and it has no minimum time between call requirements. So what this does is um, when the default hit sound gets called, then this time needs to be passed. So right now you can have more than one default hit playing, um, but if I set this on one, then the next time default hit can be played will be one second later. The next value is the loop. So for example, if you have music or a fire sound effect, then you can check this one. And here we have the audio clips. So right now you can see there are seven clips in here. So when this default hit gets called, then it will pick one of these seven sound effects to play. Most of these sound files have only one audio item, but some of them like the footstep also has more than one. All right. So if you want to use this audio manager for your own project and be my guest, I will show you how you can do this through scripting. So I'll go to Mono Develop, like that. And for example, in the start function, I want to play an audio file. So then I type a global audio player dot play sound effect. And you have two functions. One of them is play sound effects, uh, which actually plays the sound globally. So not at a certain position in the world. For example, if you have a user interface, then you want to have the play sound effect function. But if you have a footstep, for example, then you want to play a sound effect at a certain position. And then you'll have the name of the sound effect, which is footstep. All right. And then the second thing is the position of the sound effect. I'll just pass the transform dot position. That's it. So if you want to play sound effects in this game, then you can use these functions to do it without having to set up all the audio sources and audio listeners. I would like to show you how you can add your own sound effects to the audio manager. So uh, I'm clicking on the audio manager. This is my list of sound effects and I'm going to go to the bottom one, right click on it and say duplicate al array element. There it is. I'll click it open. And right now I can change its settings. So let's say test sound effects, uh, volume and minimum time between call. I don't want it to be looping and I can add audio clips. So let's remove this one. 
So when you want to add your own audio clips, then go to your audio file, right? Mine are in this audio folder. Click your audio file and just drag it into this list. Oh, let's do it again. Let's add another one. So right now I have two of these and those will be played randomly. So after doing this, uh, you can go to the script and say play sound effect, test sound effect and it will work. So happy hunting. <laughs>